Hello, good day and welcome back. All right, so today we're going to be talking about send only channels. Uh, by the way, sorry you might hear some noise in my background, so forgive me for that. A um, lot of construction and so on, other things going on. All right, um, so just to review, we were start off talking about channels and then we talk about why you want to use channels so you to send and receive values between functions, for example. And we, we haven't covered yet concurrently executing functions, but we'll get there. But the important thing is, so far we're able to, we've learned how to de um, declare a channel by saying chan and the type that you're going to send on that channel. And so today we're going to look, and we said that oh, when you do it like this, it allows both sending and receiving, as we saw in our example, which we're going to look at again just now. Today now we want to talk about when you might want to create a channel that can only allow for sending only. And of course, we're going to be playing with, um, that's incorrect, that's a send only channel. And, you know, declaring send only channel. Um, and then playing with them, of course, right? And so the important thing there is what does the declaration for that look like? And the declaration is slightly different than before when you had a send and receive channel in that you're saying, I want to declare a channel on which you can only send values of type T on it. Okay, and so let's go, just let's save this off and go to our code. So I am in channel seven directory and what I'm gonna do is just make a copy of what we had yesterday and then I'm gonna change into that directory and I'm gonna start up my code editor, All right? And so we start off with exactly the same code we, we ended with yesterday in section one. And by now, I expect this to start up. Let me quit it and start it again. So there we go. And so, yeah, I don't know what happened that first time. Um, and so this is the example we had. And so this says reading from a channel. So this is incorrect. This is reading from a channel. This is writing to a channel. Okay. But so we're talking now about using send only channel, right? Using send only channels, right? So why might you want a channel upon which you can only send and receive? Well, let's see what it is. This also creates a nil channel and we saw how oh, you do that and check in the length and all that stuff. So we don't really care about that anymore. Um, here, we know that this is how you make a channel. So there's no point in creating a nil channel for us um, because we actually want a channel now. So we'll just create a channel right away. And we're still using buffer channel because like I said, if you create a channel that's unbuffered, which means it's like this, you're saying that I have a channel and if I'm going to try and write into it, there must some, be somebody else ready to read on the other end. If there's nobody ready to read on the other end of this channel, then me trying to write on it is going to cause me to block. But since we only have a one go routine, which is running our main, and if my go routine were to do this and try to send a value down this channel, this main function would block trying to send this because there's nowhere to actually put it. And since there's no other routine set up, let's say there was a function called reader and I was to pass in channel into it. And um, let's say it's going to try and read off of, you know, um, it's going to try and read off of, of this channel. And for example, I made the channel and then somehow I pass it to reader, right? And say, hey, I want you to think. Now, when I call reader here, it's gonna go here, try to read from this channel. But of course, there is no buffer, or nobody had sent anything to it, so it would block here again. But remember, it's one single go routine I have, which is run in here, went into here, and now it's blocked here. And so go runtime is gonna detect that all my go routines are blocked. One way to think of it is treads if you know tread. All my treads are blocked for this program and it's going to terminate the program. I need some way to have this go off and run by itself like a separate tread and because it's running as a separate tread it's going to try and read and of course be blocked but only that this tread is going to be blocked and the tread that's running my main is going to be able to return after it's spin off this as a separate tread and it's going to now send a value and because it can send a value well, you can send a value because there's somebody on the other end trying to read from this. So on buffer channel, 
we can't really talk about them talk about them and ever see anything without um go routine so let's just ignore them so for, for now we're going to only be doing buffer channel i'm going to try to not get sidetracked with trying to explain again on buffer channel because trust me we need go routines for them to make sense because we can't do anything interesting with them without be um using go routines and first to cover go routines we'd still probably we still need to talk about channels so let's just ignore them for now we'll come back to unbuffer channel so we create a buffer channel which means i can state of the 10 values integer values into this channel before i couldn't put any more in like the 11 value i would be blocked so this is fine because i have a buffer of 10 i can sort of a value here it doesn't have to be 10 it can be you know whatever and now this is going to continue because it's in the channel there's room for nine more and then I could come down, put three more in, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's ignore the letter link here. Ah, that's not what I want. Let's get rid of the link. Okay, so I'm trying to write some value into this channel. And so, and then here I'm reading it out. Well, why don't I put this in a function that I'm going to call producer? All right? where I produce these values. So let me call this producer. So I move the writing of values into this channel into this producer, okay? And of course, once I create my channel, I wanna call my producer to say, hey, produce some value into this channel. And then of course, now I can read it out. So here I'm just reading out one value. But what if, it, what if I were to try and read out just, you know, a couple of values. Well, I could loop over this. A channel, if you notice, we can do call length on a channel. So the other thing we can actually do is call range on a channel, right? We can say for v colon get whatever value is in, um, so range over a channel. So I can do that. I can range over a channel, just like I could range over a slice or a map or an array. I can range over a channel also. And so here I don't care about the length. And so this is going to loop on this channel. But let's think for a second. If I create a channel and I'm ranging over it, you might think, well, when the channel is empty, when there's nothing else, this for loop would end. Because that would be the case for a slice, right? You know, if you loop over a slice that doesn't have anything, it's zero, the length of it is zero, then there's nothing to do. A channel is slightly different. Because remember, a channel, even though it might not have anything now, Somebody else could write something into that channel. So a range over a channel in a for loop, when that channel is empty, it actually block waiting for values to come in there. It doesn't just give up. So how do you tell a for loop that ranges over a channel that, hey, I want you to stop when there's nothing there? Well, you have to close the channel, right? So if a channel is closed, it means you can't write anything more into it, but you can certainly read what's in there. Okay, and so this is good because now this is our producer. He's saying, I've written my values and now I'm finished. So I can close that channel and say no more writing is going to be allowed on it. But whatever is in there, you can still read. And so later on, when I come around here to start reading from this now, this range is going to say, well, okay, there's nothing else to read, but is the channel closed? Yes, it's closed. Then I can terminate. If the channel is not closed, it doesn't terminate because... There could be another go routine that would write into it. Again, we don't have other go routines. And so what it would do, it would block. But once this block, because it's the only go routine that's running on our program right now, the go run 10 is going to detect that the one and only go routine we have is blocking waiting on a channel which, for which nobody else, no other go routine is running that's going to try and write into it. So our program would terminate. And I'll demonstrate that for you in a minute. But just trust me on this, and I'm going to keep repeating it. A lot of concept, new concept here, but you're going to get it with practice. So just stick with me. So, okay, so let's go run our main code. And so you see, using send on channel, our producer wrote in some values in, and then we were able to retrieve it. So what I was saying before is if I did not close this channel, what's going to happen is this for loop is going to run. The range is going to read out the first value, the second one, the third one. And then it's going to block on it because it's going to send no more value, but it's a channel. I'm going to wait to see if anybody else is going to write anything. But there's no other routine to be able to write anything in parallel while we're still waiting. Remember, we still sort of think of it as single-threaded, one-go routine, which is running our main. 
And so what is going to happen is this is going to deadlock because block waiting for something it's never going to be able to release. And so it's going to crash. And so that's why you see all go routine are asleep. That's because the one and only go routine we have here went to sleep waiting for this to happen. And then the runtime detected that, hey, if he's sleeping, who is the other go routine that could possibly write something into here that would wake him up? No other. That's all of them. The one and only go routine we have. Go routine number one, which was running main, you know, so program exit it. And that's line um, 13. So it's telling us that it's going to block here on 13, which is this range function, right? All right. So for now, just take it as the way to go that after you finish writing into a channel, that is good practice to close that channel. And the nice thing after you finish, if you still want to write things into it, well, you know, don't close it. But so long as you still intend to, if, so long as you finish writing into it, close it and make your range for a loop on range on that channel terminate nice and easily. And it makes your life much easier to deal with. Okay. All right. So there we go. So this is working just fine. The problem is though, this is a producer. What if there was a malicious, let's say this producer was kind of malicious and it did something like this. Oh, you know, I produce a value in there. Let me also read a value out. So um, I could suddenly do this and then read a value out and then I could print it or whatever, but I don't want to print it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this producer wrote some value and closed the channel. But remember, after you close the channel, you could still read. So it read a value out. So instead of producing three value, three values, what I'm really going to get on my channel is two because the producer pulled out one of those values. So let's see what happened. And so there we go. So this is not a good producer because I only want it to produce, which is only send value on that channel. I don't want it to actually consume any value from that channel. So why am I letting it do this? So in this case, I would define this producer this way. And I would say it can only, this is a channel that this producer can only send on. And now you could see, um, go detected that and, and wrote and put an error here to say, hey, it cannot receive any value from the send only channel. And so that protect me now that my producer can only write values into there and not read from it. Ah. Ah. There we go, All right? And so that works. Now, you might say, well, if I'm writing the producer, I wouldn't do something like that. But what if your producer was calling some other function, bad function, right? And it was calling it with C. And bad func is the function that channel, channel, int, right? Bad func actually tried to read a value um, from our channel C, right? And so now we can see that our, um, this is going to give us an error because you know what? Bad channel, what the producer got was only a channel it could send on and bad func re required a two-way channel. What if Bad channel just said that I wanted a channel I could read from would also get um, an error. Okay, so that's why um, it's good to be able to limit the type of channel that you. So hopefully you see now why it's possible to be able to say that oh I want to declare a channel that you can only read from. Okay, and I, do, I don't, and that's the kind of channel I want to pass to this producer. All right, so. While you can create a two-way channel, when I pass it to the producer here, what he sees is the channel that you can only read from. So I hopefully this is simple demonstration show you why it is you're able to be able to create a channel that you can only send into. And in the very next video, we're gonna look at um, how you create channels you can only read from. Okay? So thanks again for your time. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for spreading the word. Thanks for being patient. Um, and thank you overall. And so see you in the next video, try this out, play with it, and definitely comment or ask questions if you have them. All right, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.